having worked out the character tables for S4 and A4. We move on to the tables for S5 and A5. The new feature here, we use the character formula for alternating two tensors. To begin, we have S5, symmetric group on five letters. This group has 120 elements, and we'll start by decomposing S5 as a disjoint union of its conjugacy classes. If we use cycle notation for elements, then each conjugacy class can be represented by the cycle structure of the elements that it contains. That means we have seven classes, and we need to know the number of elements in each class for our character tables. For S4, we work these out just by counting. So I'll leave this as an exercise. You can check your counts by using the formula. We have the number of elements in the conjugacy class of the element G. It's equal to the order of our group divided by the order of the centralizer of G. We move on to definitions and rules of computation. So if we have pi v, a representation of our finite group G, we can define the character of pi as a function from our group to the complex numbers. And this is given as the character at the element G is equal to the trace of pi of G. If we're interested in irreducible representations and irreducible characters, then the irreducible characters are severely limited. So we have the following rules. First, the number of inequivalent irreducible representations, or the number of irreducible characters, is equal to the number of conjugacy classes. So for S5, that's equal to 7. Then we have the short orthogonality relations. So if we take representations pi and sigma, irreducible, we consider the sum. We get a 1 if pi and sigma are equivalent and a 0 otherwise. Considering dimensions, if we take the character of any representation, evaluate the identity element, we get the dimension of our vector space. If pi is irreducible, then the dimension divides the order of the group. And if we take the sum over each inequivalent irreducible representation, Okay, and then we sum the square of the dimensions, we get the order of the group. Then we have a calculus for computing multiplicities and direct sums. Now, if I have any finite dimensional representation of G, say pi, full reducibility says we can write pi as a direct sum of irreducibles. I'll call the multiplicity of the irreducibles n sub i for each pi sub i. Then we could write the character as the sum of the multiplicities times irreducible characters. So I can extract the multiplicities just using short orthogonality. Then we have, if we use short orthogonality of our character with itself, we get the sum of the squares of the multiplicities. For a final rule, we have the character formula for alternating two tensors. We'll say more about alternating two tensors in another video. For here, it's just going to be a method for taking old representation, creating a new representation, and we'll have a formula for the new character in terms of the old character. Let's form our character table. We'll have seven rows, one for each irreducible character, We'll have seven columns, one for each conjugacy class. We'll weight each column by the number of elements in the class. When we check the orthogonality relations. When we sum our values, we have to weight by the numbers along the top. If we proceed as we did for S4, we get four irreducible characters for free. We start with the trivial and sign representations. They're each dimension one, so the representation is equal to the character. We'll also have the representation coming from permutations. If I consider C5, we'll take the standard basis E1 through E5. Then I can let the group act on the basis vectors by just letting group elements act on the labels. Then we extend linearly. 
Now, if we consider okay, these transformations with respect to this basis, we take the trace, then all we're gonna do is take the number of basis elements fixed by our group element. With respect to the labels we're using for each consciousness class, okay, these elements, that trace is just gonna be given by the number of labels that we're not using. So at five, three, two, one, zero, one, zero. So it's gonna be the character of pi. Now, if we compute the sum of the multiplicity squared, we're gonna get a two. And the only way I can write two as a sum of positive squares is one squared plus one squared. So we only have two irreducible components occurring with multiplicity one. Now, again, proceeding as we did with S4, one of these components is gonna be trivial. So that's just given by taking the span of the sum of the basis vectors. For the other piece, okay, what we're doing here is we're taking linear combinations in our basis elements, such that the sums of the coefficients are equal to zero. Now, because we have a trivial representation in here, if I want the character of this piece, we get it by just taking the character of pi and then subtracting off all ones. So the character for sigma is gonna be given by just subtracting ones off of, okay, these numbers, and we get four, two, one, zero, minus one, zero, minus one. For another representation, we just check by multiplying by the sign representation and see if we get something new. In this case, we do. And then, okay, at this stage, you should verify your orthogonality relations. For the next irreducible character, apply our formula for the alternating two tensors to sigma. We'll need two rows. For the first row, I take the row for sigma, square each entry. Then we're gonna take the character for sigma, apply it to the square of our group elements. So if the identity squares the identity, I get a four. Two cycle squares the identity, so I get another four. Three cycle squared gives me another three cycle, so we'll get a one, and so on. Take the difference, divide by two. Then we have the character for the alternating two tensors of sigma. If we check the formula for the sum of the squares of the multiplicities, we get a one, which means we have an irreducible character. We can put it in at row five. Now, we can check to see if we get anything new by multiplying by the sign representation. In this case, nothing happens. That leaves two irreducible characters. I'll look for these in the tensor product of sigma with itself. Now, our formula for the character of a tensor product is just the product of the characters. So we're gonna have the following values for the character of the tensor. Okay, note here the dimension is equal to 16. If we check for sum of squares of multiplicities, apply our formula, we get a four. So that could be either two squared or a sum of one squares. If we check multiplicities using the short orthogonality relations against each irreducible character that we have. We have the following results. So we know we found all but one of our irreducible constituents. Now, if we check dimensions, okay, we have one plus four plus six gives us 11. So we're missing an irreducible character at dimension five. Okay, we know we haven't found this one yet. So, I'm just gonna take our tensor product and then subtract off one of each of these. That gives us row six. Then we can check to see if we have something new by multiplying by sine. When we do that, we see that we in fact get something new and that accounts for all irreducible characters of S5. Okay, at this point, you should check all the orthogonality relations. Now let's work out the character table for A5, the subgroup of even permutations. This group has 60 elements. As so before, we'll decompose A5 as a disjoint union of its conjugacy classes. What kind of even permutations occur? We have the identity element in its own class. 
The three cycles, again, form their own class. The products of disjoint two cycles, again, form their own class. And then the five cycles split into two classes with 12 elements each. Okay, note the five cycle class has to split because 24 doesn't divide 60. Now, if we're looking for irreducible characters, we should take the character table for S5, restrict each irreducible character to A5 and see what happens. Now, the sign representation is equal to one on A5. So that means we're only gonna have four items to work with. When we check, we'll see that the trivial, sigma, and irreducible five-dimensional representations have characters that are irreducible. When we look at the alternating two tensors of sigma, we see that this breaks into two pieces with multiplicity one each. And if we check the multiplicities against the three that we already have, we get zero. So something new is gonna come from the alternating two tensors. For the remaining characters, we know that A5 is isomorphic to the group of rigid motions of the icosahedron. To check the order in this group, we note we have 12 vertices. If I pick a vertex, perform a rigid motion, there are gonna be 12 places where I can put that vertex. And once we've made that choice, we have five choices for how to rotate about our vertex. So that gives us 60 group elements. Assuming that we have this isomorphism, since I only want the characters, it'll be enough to consider elements of order three, five, or two in the group of rigid motions. Now, for elements of order three, okay, we could take a triangle, we'll take its opposite, we'll put an axis of rotation through the centers, then we can rotate by two pi thirds or four pi thirds. With the right choice of basis, our transformation is given by the following matrix. If we take the trace, we get zero. For the elements of order five, same idea. Here, we're gonna fix a vertex and its opposite. Then I can rotate by multiples of two pi over five. We can choose our basis, so that our rotation is given by either two pi fifths or four pi fifths. If we put it in the right basis, take the trace. If we're using the two pi fifths, the trace is equal to the golden mean, one plus square root of five over two. If we're using four pi over five, we get the other root of x squared minus x minus one, one minus square root of five over two. Now, we can send a fixed element of order five to either one of these angles. So that's gonna give us our two irreducible characters. For computations, what do I need to know about these two roots? First, if we square them, we get one plus our root back. If we take the product, we get a minus one. If we take the sum, we get a one. Finally, for our elements of order two, I just take a triangle. We're gonna take a plane that bisects the triangle, and then I can rotate by 180 degrees. With respect to the right basis, the transformation has the following matrix, and if I take the trace, we get a minus one. So, at this point, we should check our orthogonality relations. We also note we have a check on the simplicity of A5. Okay, if you note here, if we had a proper normal subgroup, we would be able to get an irreducible character where the value at the identity equals the value at some other point in our character table. 